back to another episode of Six Life Questions. I'm your host, Corey Gregory. Today, we got Coach Mike Deegan in yes, the house. Sir. What's up, Coach? Good to be with you, G. All right, so these are the same six questions I ask everybody that sits in that chair. All right. And uh, we'll, we'll bat them back and forth. But I really believe that these are things that can help people and maybe things that, and the other thing is these questions might have changed. These answers might have changed over your life's time, but what are they right now? So, all right, number one, what is one ritual that you are dedicated to? Completely dedicated to. My right, my process for, for creating. Okay. That would be what I would say. So my process for creating, and it starts with, it starts with writing. It starts, then it's followed by movement then it's followed by deep conversation. But I believe I do my best work, creative work, when I work that process as far as write, move, communicate. Give me a, give me an example of like um, what that would look like. So write X, move, maybe work out, play, whatever, and then talk. Like give, yeah, give me that. Yeah, so, yeah, so for me, like, that, like when I'm doing my best writing work, I'm going to get up, I'm going to have a, a clear desk, and I'm going to start – typing or usually following an outline. So usually for me, it's an outline and then it goes to typing and then I, that's my writing component, but that's just garbage usually, okay. right? That's just like kind of my first run through. And then if I go work out and typically if I got, I usually just have my heart rate up too. So that's when like thoughts will come to me. Like what, I, what I have written will start going, Oh, you know what? Actually, this is kind of, this is this, 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 and this. So then I'll go back and polish that up a little bit. And then the conversation is going to come from just wise people like yourself, just friends. So it's not always, it's not going to be like the Dalai Lama, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Or something. But it's are just, you looking for those intentionally? It, um, no, it, it, it's like sometimes, sometimes yes, yeah. but more, more than that to me, it's just, I have these ideas now and the, the conversation that I have with someone who mm -hmm. I respect and admire will probably tend to like shape that in some ways off of what you were off of what I'm thinking ah, about. So you probably like noticed that. like even when we talk, yeah. like I'm like, Hey, what do you think about Mike Leach? Cause I'm like, that's something I'm. <laughs> I'm processing that, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of poke, poking holes in what I've written, trying to add for future depth to what I've written. Um, but that's that's something I really believe in, for sure. When every conversation I've had with you at length, it, even if you would say, hey, G, uh, I want to ask you about something, it ends up, or, you know, it ends up the opposite. It's almost like you're, you're pulling stuff out of the other person. It's like, it's almost like you're interviewing the person. You're always trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to gather something, right? So I'm like, yeah. hey, man, tell me what that's time you, you know, you flew out to L.A. Yeah. I, but, but it's, it, I guess it's maybe selfish in some way because I'm trying to process it through maybe something I'm either working through right now yeah. personally or something I'm trying to create. I don't so. think it's selfish, but I think it's interesting because you're always attempting to get better. That's what that, I, that, 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 that's, that's what, so I've never and, taken and that's it that what way. It, and that's what it is. And I, I, it can be off. I think that's why it has to be the right, the right people that I'm yeah. talking to. Cause it can be a bit, I wouldn't say off putting, but a lot of people aren't, aren't thinking like that or they're not, they're not, they're not living intentionally. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so when I'm like super, when I say intense, I just mean like listening intensely asking questions some people don't that's like but I, but i'll quickly know that person is not yeah the right person for that conversation and i'll try to get off of it but yeah usually i don't like you i don't like to waste time you know so yeah, if yeah. i'm having a conversation it's it's with a purpose it's yeah. not hey how's the weather or hey you, who, who the buckeye is gonna <laughs> like play it second string tailback i don't really yeah. care about that but i do care about trying to improve and get better and helping others get better love it uh number two what's one thing or it can be a couple things because that's kind of came up you are super proud of. Um, you know, yeah, I'd say I'd say two things. One, professionally, I would say um, being able to intersect all these life lessons that I've uh, taken through sports and trying to help others apply them in their business and personal life. So that's probably the macro the the macro level. Mm -hmm. If I zoom in professionally, I always say the one thing I always brag about is uh, the back to back national championships. It's not the national championships that, that does it. It's when you win one and then you're going for the second one and the bullseye's on your chest and everyone's taking their best shot at you all yeah. the time and then being able to answer the bell like that is, has been phenomenal. And the third thing I would say, you know, is, is, uh, this is cheesy, but my family, I, I, sometimes I look at it and I go, man, I'm, I'm, I'm playing with the house money. Like, yeah. I, like, like someone from my background or whatever is not supposed to have all yeah. this. Right. So um, I'm really proud of, of the family unit we've created. That's gratitude and reflection, man. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. The What I also love is that you know that the things that you've been through in baseball and learned that you're now giving back at a pretty wide net level, That's right? And that you're seeing that impact. And so it feels like 
this is where you're supposed to be. Gee, that's it. You know, I, in, in 2007, I journaled something, and it's funny. I found it, and I was like, my gosh, you know, you know we've talked about some things yeah. I've looked at professionally, and I found this thing where I said, okay, like on my on my deathbed, like what do I? And and my first thing was that Lau and the kids have felt loved, blah 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 blah. And the second thing was that I've impacted a lot of I've, I've impacted a lot of people um, through through just being authentic. And, yeah. and so, anyways, but but what what I've seen now kind of take shape is you know, you've always had your team like as a coach. I have our, our team where I can impact, um, but but be, but trying to scale that right. Yeah. And, and that's where having the courage to write and share and speak and communicate. Like so, while it, it can be tough at times. Um, yeah, you're, you're, you have to be vulnerable, right? You, yeah, you, for we've sure. We've talked about that. You take punches. Um, I really feel like uh, I'm living my dream from 2007. It's like this is, is coming to fruition uh, at right now. It's awesome. Uh, number three, what's one thing you wish you could change? Ah, oh, man. I don't, I don't These know. These are strong questions, yeah, yeah, by they, the way. They really, are, they really are. They really are. They're really strong. They make you reflect. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I live like in a, as a person who would go back and change things. Sometimes... Uh, I wish maybe I would have had some some of the exposure that I, I have now. Yeah. Um, I wish maybe I would have had it 10, 15, 20 years ago. Um, maybe a different like there could have been a di some different pathways. But I also look back and go, you know, I probably wasn't ready for the things I'm exposed to now 10, 15 years ago. So I don't know if I would change anything. Um, I would just maybe if I was having someone reflect on a younger person reflect I would say go ahead and make those jumps early. Get in yep. there. Get in the mix. You know, uh, maybe I was probably a little too cautious, maybe a little bit uh, unsure of myself. And I think the one thing I've learned interfacing with high level people is that they're all unsure. They're all they don't know. Yeah, everyone got the same. They don't know either, right? <laughs> so you got to just jump on in and get going. I wish I would have done that maybe a little sooner. Well, and I always think about this question because I think I would want to go back and change some like family dynamics. But then I'm not Corey sitting here if I don't go through those things. That, that, so oh. you, so it's like so I think that's a it's kind of like a double ended question because the things you would change in theory are probably the things that actually changed you to be this person w without a doubt. Right. So that's it's what, really like not the answer, but it is the answer. Yeah, yeah no doubt. For sure. <laughs> well, said. does that make sense? Well said. All right. Number four. How do you, Mike, currently build confidence? Or how, or what even was the first thing that gave you that initial confidence? Like where, where did that stem from that I'm Mike Deegan going to go score a bucket? Like, yeah, yeah you know, you, you know, uh, I've, I've thought about this because, you know, I have four kids and, and, and they don't have some of the earlier confidence that I had like in youth sports or high school sports. For me, I was a younger brother, um, had an older brother and I always played with older kids and I was pretty good. Not great, but I was, I was able to hang with older kids and they would say things to me like, this guy's going to be awesome. This guy's going to be awesome. So I think about the They're environment. They're gassing you up. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, just uh, from a young age, you start. So then I, I don't know. I didn't know any better than to think that I'm going to be pretty good, right? Yeah. So that was kind of at, at a younger age. Now, I've lost it. I'm not a super, super premier confident person, but being around you, this gym has helped me a ton. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think being pre being prepared um, in your job, I think, let's say from a work standpoint, like, I'm, I'm going to be prepared. Yeah. And that's going to lead to a level of confidence. But I do think movement, physicality, those types of things really, really help. Um, that's not going to be the end-all, be-all. But I do have confidence to walk in most rooms and say, hey, I belong. And I think a lot of it, it's, not, it's, it's, it's from my life's work of working hard. But I do think there's a, a physical part of it that has really helped me. If I'm not in, great, if I'm not in good shape, I know yeah. it. So Let me ask you this. When you walk on a stage to speak... Do you still get butterflies? I, I do. There, there, I always have imposter syndrome. Yeah. Especially the, the night before or the morning before. I always have imposter syndrome. Like, why does anyone want to hear this from me? And I've, I've got to give myself self-talk, confidence. Um, I got to remember how much I've prepared and how much has went into this moment. And then I also, there once again, I think being physically in shape helps, yeah, right? Yeah. If I'm off there... I'm off a little bit. That's because what I do is not the most important thing, but I, but everything has to, for me to go out there and perform my best, all those little micro things have to be aligned. And if something's off in the armor, I'm not quite where I, where it needs to be. Now, if two or three of those things are off, that's where I'm going to be really, really nervous. Mm -hmm. But I, I feel like now I'll use this word. I'm a pro. Um, I'm a pro. So a pro prepares, a pro believes, a pro is going to take care of their voice. And, 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 and these are from mistakes, by the way, For sure. right? Like I, I've, and, and a, pro, a pro is going to take care of their body. So I, I almost have 
redefine what being a pro is. And, and now it's in the speaking, consulting, writing. Yeah. A pro shows up and a pro's ready to go. Love it. Love it. Uh, number five, what's success mean to you? What's your like definition, coach? Uh, success, um, for me, it starts like I think it. it, it uh, a mentor of mine always asks this question: Is when you're happiest and most fulfilled, who are you with, and what are you doing? And so, success. Re repeat that one more time. Success, or not success, yeah. but but when you're happy, because a question you always have to think about is: when you're happiest and most fulfilled, who are you with, and what are you doing? And and, and clip so, that. Yeah. So <laughs> so yeah. So that that's really been a guiding force for me. And so for success for me, like I know I need. I need to be creative. Like I need, I need to be, I need to be working on on doing meaningful work with people that I care to be around. Mm -hmm. Like that's, uh, so. And like as a coach, I ha we have a shared purpose, and there's you know there's a whole army of us that are working to make that shared purpose happen. Right. So creative. I got to be. I have to be. My mind is. My mind goes in different places, and we've talked about this in other ways, but. If I don't fill it with something productive, it won't be filled with good things. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I've got to like I've got to work that process. And 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 then lastly, like success, I I, I mentioned earlier, but I do like my, my family unit is so important to me, maybe to a flaw in some ways. But if that's off, if that's if, if I'm not if I'm not filling that bucket, then I'm not quite myself. So success is probably working in a creative lens, doing work, doing meaningful work with people that, that I love and I care about. And then also making sure the family unit's tight, you know. So. Not one person has answered that question that was materialistic item it, things. Nah, it, it's and it's, I don't know that I'll be having a lot of people through here to answer these questions that operate like that anyway. But I think people are gonna they're probably thinking different answers are gonna come yeah, out. But that's not in anybody's it's response. It's not, you know, and I always I'm always <clears> cautious. Like I'm you know, I'm always cautious because, you know, what do rich people tell you? Rich people tell you that money's not everything. But they sometimes they've lost the perspective of what it's like to live paycheck to paycheck or worse. For right. Sure. So you have to have like a certain baseline of, of success of, of, you know, maybe the ability to do some things that, that are, that are special, but I don't know. Like, I, and the, I don't mean this from a high and mighty place. Cause, it, but I'm just wired. Like I don't, I really don't care about a lot of the material things mm -hmm. I do. I'd li I like to do some, I like to create experiences. You yeah, know what I mean? Of course. I, I want to be able to, 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 I want to be able to have the ability to take our kids on trips and show them different parts of the world. But yeah, like yeah, I don't really have like uh, like money goals like that, but I do have a, but but money and and material like it's gonna start driving it in some ways. So I think probably most people you've talked to have have reached the threshold where yeah. where money's probably not as driven. But for some people, it's gonna have to be. But right? also, your creative process, the thing you love so much of what you do, you know if that if that process is off. The money's not gonna happen anyway. That's right. That's right. That's right. And and I and I figured that out about myself a long time ago. Because of I, I don't know like you, you've taken um, the place where you have come from and, and really has driven you to, to to change your family's lifestyle, right? Um, I, I have a, a bit of a money phobia, like where I've had to learn that it's okay to make money. Like yeah. I've had to learn that no, like you 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 add value, so therefore you charge, right? Like so. Um, and I've, I have great people in my life that have really encouraged me on that path, you know, but, but you're so right. If, if I'm not creating, if I'm not, then, then that, that money trail is not going to follow for sure. All right. Last one. Number six, what's one piece of advice. So you're, you're pretty much, you're done. You write it on a piece of paper. You're leaving it. Just one piece of advice blanketed that you would leave everyone, your family, no matter who it is. If you only had a choice to say this is one statement, one quote, one way of life, something. Everything's going to be all right. And I, and I mean that. Like, so I, I just, you know, being in the space that I'm in right now, uh, mental health, all those things, it, it, it's really at the forefront. And people are, you know, girlfriends are going to break up with you. You're going to be poor. You're going to lose your job. Like, but it's all going to be all right. You know, I, I, I always felt my I was so proud the other day. Uh, my daughter said to me, uh, daddy's got you. And cause I always tell her, daddy's got you. Like you're all yeah. good. Like, like, uh, cause, I, cause I want them to know, like if you're drunk at a party or something, yeah, your dad's got you. Call me. Like, it's all good. Like we can, we can get past almost anything. Yeah. Right. Like, you don't want to think, you don't want them to ever think that there's no return from a situation. Like, I've tried to say the yeah, same you, thing. You're, we're going to, it's going to be all right. Like, yeah, like you're going to have your heart broken. You're going to, all these things are, but, but it's, it's all good. Like just, just, just stick with it. I, like I said, I, maybe it's intimately because of the of the demographic I work with. I just see see them things that think they think that certain things are, are terminal or final, and they're not. Like, no. like you've been kicked. 
Yeah, uh, well, a been, bunch. You, well, you've been kicked, probably throat punched. <laughs> yeah, you've been throat punched, right? And, and you went to the top and bounced yeah. and bounced. Like, but you're, it's all good, right? And and I, I don't know. I, 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 yeah, you, I'm rambling because I'm no. pretty passionate about that topic. But there's so many other things. But as I sit here right now, I said, you're going to be good. Like, just, just I think it was it. De Niro uh, did a thing where he said, like, the good times will end. And, but so will the bad. Yeah. So n- none of them are just absolute. They're, they're not. And you got to know that when you're in a shitty situation, that there is going to be an end to it at some point. Like it's going to get better. Yeah. And that when shit's killing it, just know there's also going to be an end to that. And you have to understand that that's how the waves go. And the problem is don't be feeling yourself too much when they're too good. And don't be beating yourself up too bad when it's too low. That's the answer. I mean, that, yeah. that that's it right there. Like, though, everything is, there's nothing's finite. Like, it's, yeah, we're living in, and in, 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 you know, we're, we just got to keep going, keep keep moving. Um, that's why, like, people ask, oh, it's like winning a championship. It's cool, but it's not that cool because yeah. I'm already thinking about the next thing, right? And and when we lose, oh, you crushed? Nah, I'm, I, I'm not as crushed as people think. You know, like, yeah. we, we got swept this year to end our season. Well, I'm fine. I'm sitting here right now with you, right? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, just keep it moving, baby. That's what I would say. Keep Good. it moving. Where can everybody find you at, Coach? You can. I, I like to play on Twitter. I haven't been on there as much recently, but Twitter. Um, you know, I have a, my website, CoachMikeDegan.com, which has a ton of articles and things that I share with that idea of the life lessons I've learned through sports. You could always follow our, follow our baseball program as well at Denison.edu. Sweet. Thanks for ha- thanks for uh, coming on, Coach. Appreciate Six you. life questions with Coach Mike Deegan. Appreciate we out. It. Thank you. <laughs>